Now moving on to our test for tactile discrimination or fine touch discrimination. Okay. So we have a few different tests and it's important to know the difference between each. The first test that we have is stereognosis. Now this is your ability to identify an object without seeing it. So just by using your hands. I feel like I'm pretty good at this mm -hmm. because if I have a purse full of items, I can easily dig around through my purse and find the item that I want without looking. So, but now we're gonna test that in our patient. So can you go ahead and hold your hand out and close your eyes and now tell me what object I'm handing you. iPhone. iPhone, wonderful, that's correct. Okay, so keep your eyes closed. Now I'm handing you another object. A paper clip. Very good, that's a paper clip. So that would mean that stereognosis is intact. And so then next I'm going to test the patient's test called graphesthesia. So if you think about a graphic designer okay. or someone who draws graffiti, so that kind of graphic words mean to draw typically mm -hmm. or talk about a picture of some sort. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have the patient hold their hand out and they're going to close their eyes. I'm going to draw some numbers on the patient's hands with their eyes closed and they're going to tell me what number that I'm drawing. One, seven. Very good. So that would indicate that graphesthesia is intact. So again, key point, how to remember the difference think between stereognosis and graphesthesia. Remember that the graphic, that graphic designer or uh, someone who does graffiti, then that's going to mean that you draw so and that you're drawing in the hand. You're just drawing on the hands. Okay. Yes. Now, no pens, just light touch, right? You can do light touch just with any object. I'm using the end of the reflex hammer. You can also use, you know, a pen light. Uh, I do recommend doing numbers rather than letters. Yes. Just because it's a little bit nicer. Now moving on to two point discrimination. This is where we touch with two points at the same time. We're asking the client to identify if it feels like one point or two points. So fingers have a lot more nerve endings, so we typically feel more than the arm. So can you show us how this looks? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to have the patient close their eyes again, and I'm going to do this test twice, once on their arm and then once on their hand. And just like you said, because there's more nerve sensation in the fingers and hands, so the client should be able to better distinguish two points from one mm -hmm. on their hand and fingers than on their arm. But let's take a look. Okay. So the client's their eye closed. Tell me if you can feel, I'm going to lay it down, so tell me if this feels like two points or one. Two. Two points or one. Two. Two points or one. One. So, and as you noticed, I did distances and I got it slowly closer together. And so this was the distance that on the arm, it felt like only one point. So it's like chopsticks. You're getting them closer and closer together. Closer and closer together and seeing when does it feel like one point when in fact it's still two. Oh. So on the arm, we'd want to note this distance. Okay. So I'm noting that distance. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the hand. On the hand, okay. So do you feel two points or one? Two. Two points or one? Two. Two points or one? Two. Two points or one? One. Very good. Wow. wow. That was so pretty interesting. So on the arm, this distance felt like one point. On the hand, they were practically together and they felt like one point. So that means his hand is better able to distinguish two points from one than the arm, which is, in fact, the finding that we wanted to see. Yeah, because there's more nerve endings, right, the closer you get to your peripheries. Yes, yes. Hey, did you see the new study guide that follows along with this video? So cut your study time in half and increase your retention of the need to know key points and memory tricks that love to come up on nursing school exams. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, neatly organized into playlists. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today.